And did thou speak in ancient time? Walk upon England's mountains, Queen. And was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? And did the counter? I'm out here campaigning today because I really care about our NHS. I don't know if you've heard, but they're going to close the um, maternity services in Poole. We're going to be losing our a &E in Poole Hospital. We're going to be losing our maternity unit. The community hospitals right across Dorset, in Alderney, in um, St Leonard's, they're being closed. And that's just the start of things. We're looking also at losing dementia care services in adult mental health um, as well as GP practices so it's really important that the people of Paul know what's happening nationally and how this will affect us locally. I've come out today um, to help campaign to save um, our hospital services because I'm really concerned about the funding cuts within our NHS and social care. What's happened across the country is we've got these um, sustainability and transformation plans which basically mean a massive reduction in our hospital services and our uh, care services. Well today, well it's, it's a nice day, it's dry, we're having a really good day because loads of people are, are signing up as they, and even people who actually work in the hospital, they're, they're signing up as well. I suddenly found to my surprise that talking about a third of GP surgeries being closed the NHS is severely underfunded and that needs to be addressed, as does social care of the elderly. That is not a new problem, the number of elderly. We have known for 70 years that the post-war baby boomers will reach old age. The burden of the elderly, well a lot of people don't realise that up in Scotland the NHS is still there for people who are elderly. There are no charges if you move into um, residential care, whereas in England there's been a complete rundown of social and health care and they're trying to dump the burden now onto the fact that the ageing population is to blame. What we want is for this reorganisation to be put on hold and the real priorities really need to be tackled and those are solving the A&E crisis, putting more money into social care which has been underfunded for all these years. We need to take pressure off frontline staff by having more recruitment. What we don't want to do is spend millions and millions of pounds on another reorganisation when that money needs to be spent now. So if the government wants to be intransigent and say that there is no more money then we're going to tell them that we do not go along with their reorganisation. My name's John, this is Dolly, our daughter. Dolly's 10 years old and has cerebral palsy. Dolly was born in the in Dorchester Hospital and she was taken immediately to Skibu, where she had an emergency cesarean to be born. There was a distinct lack of oxygen during her birth that caused an awful lot of problems for her. And it's thanks to the care of the, the hospital itself that we've managed to get to this point in her life. There's specific people at the hospital who have been absolute, absolutely wonderful in her care you know, and get her to this point. You know, we've got a wonderful, joyous little girl here that just wouldn't have happened if we'd had to be diverted to a different hospital. You know, for example, Poole or Bournemouth, she would be with us today. It's what? It saves people. It saves people. That's good. And are they very kind, the nurses? Yeah. What about Penny? Penny. Yeah. Penny Mansey? Yeah. Yeah, is she your favourite? Yeah. Very good, and what does she do for you? Help. Helps. That's good, that's good. You know what? <laughs> and, and do you want that hospital to always be there? Yeah. So this, this is a, a talk about the clinical services review, which is going on in Dorset as we speak. Crisis, what crisis? This is very opportune time to come and talk to you because the, it's re really hit the headlines. I mean, the, the CCG must be absolutely cursing this, this t season because they've been sitting on this thing for a couple of years now, waiting to launch it on an unsuspecting public, and they happen to have chosen to have done it when the NHS is going through one of its worst crises <coughs> ever. We've been starved of money since 2010. 
under New Labour, for all its faults, it did fund the NHS properly and we were had a, a boom in time, lots of new services were opened. Now it's all gone pear-shaped, everything's shutting, the waiting times are shooting up. The, the, um, the safety valve in the system which makes the most noise is the a and &E departments. Very shrill, very obvious. But that's not the only place where the crisis is going, it's happening everywhere. Theresa May and Jeremy Hunt can't see the crisis, but everyone else can. And we get various little lies that get banded around to uh, excuse the crisis. Uh, a popular one is to blame people who are getting older. People have been living longer every year for the last 30 or 40 years. It hasn't suddenly happened in the last couple of years. This has been a trend, and it's something to celebrate. It, I mean, the health service is working. The public health is working. People are living longer. It's not true that uh, most elderly people are ill as well. This, this is the level of disability among the elderly, which is actually falling. So a lot of people getting to retirement, having quite long retirements. This is the reason for the crisis. That the, this, this last 30 years, again, just look at the shape. You won't see the figures. But over the last few decades, the NHS has gone feast to famine, feast to famine. Now we've gone, we're on in the critical list because the last few years we've been getting just about 1% and that 1% hasn't gone to the NHS, a lot of it has gone but it had to be siphoned back to social services who've been utterly decimated by the Tories. The Cabinet has maintained the fiction that the NHS had asked for a certain amount of money and was given it. <coughs> uh, that came from Simon Stevens, said we could get by with 8 billion increase and that government claimed to have given him that. Unfortunately, that eight billion has got to be set against a savings target of 22 billion. A rare breed, another rare, rare breed. This is an, a very honest Conservative MP, Sarah Williston, <coughs> MP in, in Totnes. She's a GP, chair of the Health Select Committee, and she <coughs> took on her own party. Theresa May and Jeremy Hunt said, in fact, it wasn't eight billion we've given the NHS, we've given them 10 billion. What have they got to whine about? She went and looked at the figures and said, no, you're not. You've given them 4.5. Now, this is the miracle of the NHS. Despite that, despite the fact we have the lowest funding in Western Europe for decades, we still come out top for value for money. At the bottom came America. And what you can learn from that is that is entirely down to the market system within health. The NHS has been able to achieve that because for the, even now, for the most part, most of the money in the NHS is spent on looking after people. Whereas in America, 40% of it goes out in profits to insurance companies. It's not to do with the NHS being inefficient. It is massively efficient. It's a very good system. The only reason the NHS isn't working is some, no one's putting petrol in the tank, which brings us... So the situation in Dorset. Now there are two responses to this problem of funding, and it is a fund problem of underfunding. You can either increase the funding or you can cut your services to match the lower funding. And that's what this is about. This is the clinical services review. This is about matching the services in Dorset to a lower level of funding. The brains behind the whole scheme wasn't really the clinical commissioning group. They are the front men. The uh, intellectual firepower came from this bunch of um, cowboys, McKinsey. Uh, they're an American firm. They've been privatising all around the world for decades. Uh, they did advise the rail operating companies a few decades ago on uh, main maintaining rail track. Uh, at that stage, there was scheduled maintenance and the Kinsey's came and said no you're wasting time just just repair things when they need, need repairing you can say it so they, and that was great because they, that's, that's what they wanted to hear and then what happened was what, what was well. and then the rail track got taken back into public ownership that is the brain power of McKinsey they have been employed by Dorset CCG for almost three million pounds and have developed this document and a lot of the graphs you'll see in here were their graphs. The document itself, as you flip through it, looks, looks nice, doesn't it? Lots of happy, smiling faces. But if you look on page eight, you'll find the real reason, and that is funding. There's 22 billion to be saved across the nation. 
The Dorset's share of that shortfall in underfunding is £158 million. Pounds. That's the context of this document. How can Dorset still provide any sort of health service with that level of cut? Uh, we've, we've had, up to now, we've had three main hospitals, Poole, Bournemouth and Dorchester, all providing a comprehensive range of service. Um, you can go in there, have your baby, you can go in there with an accident, they'll you'll be properly treated for everything. Not enough money left now to run three comprehensive hospitals. So they're splitting it all up so that one will focus on emergency care over in Bournemouth. And, and here over in Dorchester, our child services and our maternity services are set to be downgraded. Paul facing the pool is facing the loss of its A&E department. Bournemouth will become the trauma centre, which wouldn't matter, but Bournemouth Hospital is right on the far end of the county. It's almost in Hampshire. Mm. And Bournemouth achieved a bit more distinction end of last year as the most traffic congested mm. town in England. Mm. Which is fine if you're a blue light ambulance, but not so good if you're a young mum, because you sit in the traffic jams. Can you um, uh, explain exactly what is being privatised? Yeah, good question. This, the whole privatisation of the NHS has happened very, very slowly, so that we don't notice it. But <coughs> I put a letter in the Echo um, the other week. How do you eat an elephant in small chunks? And that's they've been very clever over the last three decades, doing it in little pieces so we don't notice. This doesn't apparently include any privatisation, you might think. But just step back a minute, we can see what happened with our post offices, when there was little post offices in all the villages, very unattractive to a private provider, and they just shut them all, forced everything into towns, into a few big post offices, which were then profitable and um, cheap to run for a private. And they're very profitable, they've made millions out of the post office. I see that as what's happening now with the, with the NHS, all the little branch surveys, all the things in the villages being shut down over the next few years coming into more central hubs, as these, this document invites us to <coughs> endorse. At that point, when you've got a, a hub in an area, which brings together all the GPs, community services, local consultants in, a, uh, uh, in the local hospital, what you've got there now is, the, is an American Health Maintenance Organisation, <coughs> HMO, or Accountable Care Organisation, which is then exactly what the Americans want to bid for. Mm. So I think my reading of it is this is the period of contraction like with the post offices and then a few years, year or so's time there'll be franchises going out for providing services in West Dorset and the NHS people will only be one bidder among many and a, a difficult bidder because people like Virgin uh, base themselves offshore and don't pay tax so they can undercut NHS bids, mm. and we've already seen it in, in Somerset, where a whole chunk of community services is going over to Virgin. Me and GP land, we kind of thought we'd be alright uh, until halfway through this review. This is the uh, primary care strategy, uh, which was on the CCG's website until the end of December, when Ross Keyes spotted it and drew it to the attention of the Health Scrutiny Committee when it points it suddenly disappeared. Now the fact that it disappeared doesn't mean they're not still doing it, it just means they're not doing it in public. So for example, in my locality, which is Wayne from Portland, we've got 12, they call them sites, so it's eight surgeries and four branch surgeries, so makes 12. Envisage that coming down to three or six. And that's repeated right the way across Dorset. This is the primary care document, again, the nice, happy, smiley faces. Um, I can, you can come and look at this later, but each area has this map of where the GPs are at the moment. Again, too small to see. Come, come and read it later, but every area says it down here. This is for Purbeck, we could go down, could lose um, six sites down to the ground, down to three. So every area is going to face cuts. Now, to the questionnaire. If you all open your questionnaires, now these, the questions here, I've summarised here. So do you believe in motherhood and apple pie? Because that's, <laughs> that's what the questions are like. Having a new hub in your area that delivers great services sounds wonderful. So the uninformed may be inclined to tick. That sounds nice. Unfortunately, a tick in the yes box means you've also, without realising it, ticked that you want to downgrade your local community hospital or even close it. Yeah, you could tick. You'd like to see great services at Bournemouth Hospital. 
but you don't want to lose your local services mm -hmm. either. Towards the end of this Conservative term, the, the increases for NHS funding are going to be even lower. And that, if this, if I think this is a crisis, wait till you see what happens in two years. A Labour politician, a genuine one. But the NHS will last as long as there are folk left with the faith to fight for it. And that has to be us and this campaign, which is fighting now for the very survival of the NHS. It's quite important that people do engage in this consultation and, and go to the events or, or you can go online and make your voices heard. There's a demonstration coming up in London, 4th of March.